Welcome back. Well, now we're turning our attention to security. It is indeed a big one. Uh, we just saw that report, and then there are several other items that were highlighted in the dailies today, if you caught our opening sequence. Well, this morning, we have the privilege of being joined by retired Vice Admiral Akin Aduo, CFR. He's a former Chief of Naval Staff. Good morning, sir. Good, Good morning. Well, it, it, uh, it's something that will always concern anybody. Anywhere in the world, security always a big topic. Now, we've been battling uh, Boko Haram for a while now, even though there are different perspectives from those who are on the front lines. Give us your impression, your assessment of what you've seen, how you've seen us approach this. What do you think? Well, thank you for um, having me. Um, I would do watch your program and listen to the discussion, argument. Thank you, sir. Um, about security, the concern of citizens, and the um, condition and situation in which innocent Nigerians in villages and towns, um, especially in the Northeast, have found themselves. Um, it's been very saddening. Um, and then the situation continues. It's not that the armed forces are not doing what they should do, but the way they do these things uh, have really stood against the success of their efforts. War is not a football or cricket match. It's not a game. And I'm speaking from my experience in the Nigerian Civil War, the Biafran War, in which I led in fact, all the coastal operations from Lagos to Borne for the historic landing in that um, um, at the start of that operation. So, are you suggesting that? The approach needs to be similar to how we approached the war at that time with this? Mm, yes. How? The, the approach to that civil war was uh, purposed on what we call in the military I say in the Navy, in naval language, um, it's, war is its top secret operational engagement. War is not a television show. You catch or kill a number of soldiers sometimes, or you rescue one person. In this war, it goes on television. It goes, it becomes headline news. You've saved a, an innocent, uh, maybe one member of the uh, abducted girls in um, what's the first place? Uh, Chibok. Chibok. And then later on, the, um, what's the other one? Dapchi. Dap, Dapchi. It goes on television. The Air Force bombs 
a particular uh, location, uh, position of the <laughs> Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. And this, the very strike of those positions is, the, is shown live on television. Are you saying, sir, that those actions are undermining the success of the They are, because it gives, the, those, <laughs> it gives your enemies the, the, the um, uh, fighting uh, Boko Haram that you're trying to conquer. Perhaps they... It gives them courage. Perhaps the intention of government, when they do that, is to let the Nigerian know that they are actually doing something. Why do, why do Nigerians need to know all them on live television? War is based on secret planning, order of battle. You don't keep your, your, your path to the fighting ground exposed to, to your enemies. And when you really hit them, the result goes on, I mean, the, the, this minor success goes on live television. Then you face the press, make, make statements. We did, if we fought the Biafran war, like, like has been going on on Boko Haram, and uh, what's the, these farmers, uh, terrorists, and so on. Then the, the Biafran war would have lasted over 10 years. Perhaps so, another, sorry, uh, Chairman. Perhaps another angle to look at this, uh, sir, is that the civil war was fought during a military era, but now we have a civilian government. Uh, is there a difference? Should we have been approaching it differently, or you think we should, still should have gone the same way? <laughs> that's, that's, in fact, another story. I was appointed Chief of Naval Staff in April 1980 by President Shagari. Like this. I was never brought to the, uh, the floor of the National Assembly to be ex queried, examined, and, um, and assessed by politically elected members of the, of the National Assembly. The appointment of service chiefs all over the world from where I even attended courses, the, 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 uh, the British um, uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, um, and all other such services, the appointment is at the prerogative of the Prime Minister in the UK recommend, I mean, uh, the only goes to the Queen to inform the Queen. Appointment of service chiefs doesn't go to the House of Commons or even House of Lords for approval. All right, so we... What we do here, and that places the military in the hands of politicians. And a, a, a politician will now say, oh, this is my brother's son. I, I want him to, to be, to be uh, to serve in the, in the Navy, in was, the customs, well, well, in the this and that. All right, so, sorry to jump That's in. That's why, why the military right mm -hmm. now, during this war, believe that they have to I mean, war is not a cinema show. The interesting point you raised, sir, but we'll come to some of them uh, when we come back from yes. this break in just a moment. Please stay with us.
Well, sir, uh, concerning the service chiefs, I mean, uh, even in 2015, the president had to write the National Assembly for uh, confirmation of the service chiefs. That's what our law requires. So in terms of submitting themselves to civilian authority, that's what the law says. And so That law is wrong. It's in we took up the, the, um, the system of military um, operations, training, from the British when we were a colonial country. <laughs> In that country, there is no presentation of service chief's appointments to the House of Commons, to the Parliament, for about uh, maybe 500, 600 years. In the United States, of, of whose Naval War College I also attended, the appointment of service chiefs is by the president and commander in chief. He was an elected official. Not to note after oh, presenting them, handing them over to the National Assembly, the lawmaking political body. But so if they are not answerable if, to the people. Sorry, I haven't finished that. Okay. You said this is the law of the country. Yes, sir. Some of our laws, in fact, most of our laws are subject to the constitution of the republic. The mention of submitting service chiefs appointments to the National Assembly is in the Armed Forces Act. And the Armed Forces Act is made up of laws affecting the military. Mm. But the Armed Forces Act is subject to the Constitution, which is the <laughs> controlling authority for all laws made in the, nation, okay. in the National Assembly. It's not in the Constitution, well, unless my own copy <laughs> of that is wrong. The only time service chiefs are supposed to appear before the National Assembly is when they have to defend their um, votes financial vote, or what do you call it? Sorry? The budget? The budget. That mm. is, oh, <clears throat> listen. In my own time, a lawyer who was a member of the National Assembly from my own local government received a, maybe information and a letter, petition written against me for, but, and that was in fact falsely, for uh, accusing me of lobbying the Ministry of Works to pass the um, the road from Ore. I'm from Ondo State, Okitiwukwa local government, accusing me of lobbying the Ministry of Works, Federal Ministry of Works, to pass the, the road from Ore to Okitiwukwa through the uh, location of my own personal house in, in my town, which was a lie. Anyway, that letter was written to me, inviting me to the House of Reps to come and defend what I, in fact, knew nothing about. Did you defend it eventually? 
when I got that letter, I had to, re I have to <laughs> take it to my commander in chief. And that's the only link between a service chief and the House of okay. Lawmaking. But President Shagari, yeah. after getting that, the letter, I referred to him for permission to obey the invitation to the House. He sent his, he asked the Secretary to Government, she must have to call me and that I should ignore that letter. It was not in line with the good governance routine and process. Mm. That that letter should have come, any such letter should have come to the presidency for the commander in chief. That my appointment is not a political one. And then he wrote a letter to the, to the National and to the House of uh, Reps yeah. at that time. And <laughs> I can <laughs> say condemned oh, yeah, so the that... improper okay. channel of communication. L let me bring in this, Chief. Um, I know that uh, lawyers, they will always have their views about the law and the positions of the law, yeah. but we all want to see improvements and safety of lives and property. Ultimately, that is the intention. So what would you want to see done differently so that we can have better results in our fight? Thank you. That's a very good question, helpful question. The war is led by and fought by the Joint Chiefs of staff, that is the a, um, it made of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is made up of the Chiefs of Services. In our own case, we have a Chief of Defense Staff. Yeah. You have an Army Chief of Chief of Army Staff, the Naval Chief of Naval staff, Air Force as well. They get the orders from the Commander-in-Chief that war has been declared against is the Cameroon or, in this case, a civil war, internal war, and uh, go out there. In our own case, in our own civil war, the, Head of state, commander in chief, thank God he's still alive, gave us instruction that this war has been declared against the, uh, the Eastern states, declaring declaration of their own independence, which they wanted to secede from Nigeria, led by, I don't want to name names privately, but we were given also a, an order booklet that this war should actually be uh, fought like a poli police action because it's against our brothers, our fellow officers and men. We train together we have been citizens of the same country and so on. And we should, or we will want to avoid much bloodshed. Those orders were from the head of state, the, pres the head of government, the commander in chief, not from the National Assembly. And uh, that, gave us, that became a problem for us because much of the ammunition, the weapons we needed were withheld. That gave us a lot of things. While the Biafrans were bombing us, dropping 
napal bombs, setting tanks in Bonnie, diesel tanks on fire. And <laughs> it, it was causing us a lot of trouble, problems. For that reason, if I adequately who was who took uh, passage on board my ship. He was my guest. I, was, <laughs> I used to call him my passenger. In fact, at that time, his title was uh, Land Forces Officer or Land Forces Commander. I was Naval Forces Commander. I was his naval equivalent. Because without me, without my ships, my landing craft, the army could never have got to Boni and so on. So, so I was going to ask, are you happy with the relationship mm -hmm. between different offices, the army, interagency cooperation now, as we're prosecuting this war against Boko Haram? Well, it happens that this, the present war, uh, it's being fought solely on land. But we see Air Force, which you say they are making, they, they, they put it on TV when yeah. they bomb Boko Haram targets. Yes, that is the, that's what I'm, I'm really talking about. The enemies you are fighting, they learn, they, they, they analyze, they study, your report as they see, they watch it on TV, and they re-strategize and hit places, and their intelligence reports are much better and higher, and they are closer even to the, to the city. But, but sir, the world is a global village. We see armies of other countries, they do the same thing, and they still record victory. So are we supposed to act differently? Well, when you see them, do, do they, uh, is it from their addressing the press? No, their successes or difficulties and failures go to their head, supreme headquarters. And it is the, it is the, supreme, the headquarters that would approve whatever report has to be released to the public. Is this information that you are giving us, is it unknown? Do you think it is unknown to the, to the service chiefs you know, for this to be going on? <laughs> for what? No, you, you, you said that these uh, things, that we shouldn't be putting such information on TV because the war we're fighting is not... A football match is not a cricket match. Precisely. But the service chiefs ought to know that. And of course, these things do go on sometimes with their permission as well. Do you well, think they, they are... I think it comes to a contest for maybe what I can call self uh, Mm. Maybe as as a as a naval naval officer, mm. I want to show on TV, and that's the best way to be popular. <laughs> you know, part of my own success in that war was to rescue David Ejo, mm. who had absconded the war. <laughs> or fled from Benin City as military governor to a fishing village near Saple. And he said, well, that's what I read in the papers. And we all read in the papers that he rode a bicycle and maybe dressed like a, a female cyclist or something like that. And he ran away. When the Biafrans crossed over and took over the gov government, the state of uh, this thing. Now, 
like we, in fact, left Lagos eh? with adequately on board my ship, followed by some four other ships and a uh, troop carrier in which they had their vehicles, soldiers, eh? and uh, other things that they needed. Okay. We, we left Lagos on the order of the commander. That was Benjamin Adekunle of maintaining perfect radio silence. There will be no communication on, on radio between ships, between troops. It's after success of an operation that a report will go to the, to the headquarters, Supreme Headquarters, and I, in fact, happen to have been chosen as the communicator for, for want of a better word. Because as a, the effect of re controlling provision of arms and ammunition to us okay. was hitting us hard. Mm. We, the, the commander in chief, in fact, bad Brigadier Adekunle from coming to Lagos because he, he on radio, he would talk to his commander, to his CNC. You were sitting on your this and that in an air conditioned room. This, this <laughs> buggers, <laughs> for a better pronunciation of that word. You know, are bombing us here. They are, they are, they are roasting us, and this and that. So the the commander in chief banned banned him from coming to Lagos. He wanted to many times, and it would have been in another small war within the within the headquarters. So uh, I was always the uh, conduit. My ship, okay. from between we, Lagos and the and the Eastern War Front. Um, um, sir, that way. In fact, I, 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 had, I was invited to the War Cabinet, sometimes lasting from maybe 9 p.m. to to the early hours of the morning, mm. and I was brief. I'll brief the CNC plus his uh, very high ranking officers. I didn't go on, on television. You don't do that because well, you are well. laying, you are, you, are, you, are, you are plotting a course to even stare we, for the enemy. Even though, I mean, as pressmen, we always want as much information as we want from the army. We hope that this will not make them <laughs> not give no, us but operational, less information that listen, we need. You will get the news that you want from a report from the headquarters, not from, not from the war front, not from some... Okay, sir, we, we, we have to anchor at this point. Uh, we do thank you very that much. That is why you. these people are ongoing. They are, they, they are more powerful now because of what they do, and they have helped us. All right, sir. From abroad, from within the country, and so on. All right. Uh, retired Vice Admiral Akin Adua, CFR, former Chief of Naval Staff, thank you very much indeed for your thoughts this morning, sir. If, if, I, if I had to be given uh, publicity to what I, what I was doing, I would have escorted David Ejo personally in the seaplane, which was approved by, the, by General Gawan, 
to pick him up from alongside my ship. <laughs> All right, so we're out then, of time. We... Then, then I would have... I probably would have got a medal <laughs> <laughs> from the press. Thank you very much, sir. We'll be back in just a moment, everyone. Please join us again.